into generic. Hey guys, here. welcome back to another episode of <laughs> Smash Talk. In today's episode, my dudes, we are going to be covering another leak. Today's installment of Leaky Pipes. Oh yes, we are here today to cover another leak. Come on. Now, this was going to be a different video at some point. Of course, I'm going to we'll do a video, another video later on. But for now, we're covering a leak that was that was discovered a bit ago. It was about two days ago since uh, when it was discovered, and it talked. It was very interesting. I actually really like this leak a lot. Whether it's real or fake, it was actually really creatively done. Unlike a lot of leaks, you know, a lot of leaks but when text-based leaks when they appear, it's always just hey, these are the facts. You're gonna see this, this, and this. You're gonna see A, B, C, and C. They tell you the character flat out and outright. You know, it doesn't leave you for guessing. However, this leak is interesting because it mentions uh, 11 characters that may be in the next Smash game. However, those 11 characters, the leaker did not even say. Instead, what the leader, leaker did is throughout each month, according to this leaker, there will be a character announced every single month besides December. There will be a new character announced, of course, because December is the release date, December 7th. So as I said before, there's 11 characters. There's gonna, apparently, according to this leak, there's going to be two characters revealed in July, one character revealed in August, one character revealed in September, two characters revealed in October, one character in November, and there are three other characters. Characters I ought to slap your white ass. That are going to be DLC. So that's going to be, well, either DLC or they're going to be in the game. They're not actually going to be revealed till the game comes out. And then there's trailers that are going to be coming later on. Similar to how there were, uh, there was the Duck Hunt trailer, Bowser Jr. I believe that was it. That was a couple characters that wasn't revealed on its own, basically. So, for the most part, that's basically what this leak entails is a bunch of characters revealed. Now, the fact that there's 11 characters revealed in this leak is kind of wild. I'm not going to lie to you guys. The fact that there are 11 characters revealed in the game, or 11 characters revealed for a newcomer status, is kind of wild. I can see some of these characters, a couple, maybe, being Echo Fighters, but for the most part, these characters are going to be characters that have a, you know, unique moveset and all that. So, I'm actually kind of surprised that there are this many characters. As you guys know, how I treat leaks, I didn't really explain it very well in my last leak video, which was the, the uh, Big Smash leaks, uh, leak. Company. And I will, trust me, I will talk about that leak in a future video, so expect a video on that coming out very, very soon. However, right now we're talking about this leak here, so let's go ahead and get it popping. So, for starters, we have, in July, we have the characters King and Ponytail will be revealed in a mini direct. So, as I said before, they give characters code names. So, in July, the characters King and Ponytail will be revealed in a mini direct. So, these characters are not flat out revealed, but they are speculated. And it's basically your job to come up with code names for all 11 of these characters. Now, my question is for you guys is, who do you guys think is are the characters introduced, you know, as we go through them in order? So we're going to start, like I said, with July and move all the way to November. So first things first, we have King and Ponytail. Now, I think people can obviously speculate that the codename King, the character codename King, is of course King K. Rule because K. Rule is a character that so many people have wanted in Smash including myself if you guys don't know i'm a huge donkey kong fanboy i love the donkey kong series one of my favorite franchises period i love the environment all that jazz and the fact that k rule could possibly be in smash brothers is mind-boggling k rule is one probably one of my favorite ones i'm not gonna lie i just love the fact that he's maniacal and smart with his plans but he's also funny and has funny behaviors that is Donkey Kong-esque. So that's why I like the character a lot. He's, he's silly, but he's not stupid, basically. And as you guys know, you've had many boss fights with him in the past. And he's used the, things like the blunderbuss and, you know, the crown throwing technique. Those could be some attacks and things. I'm not, I'm going to loosely cover these because I will get to King K. Rool definitely 
in more depth in a later video. So right now we're gonna leave it as that K rule. I believe I believe the character associated with codename King is gonna be King K rule. Especially since it has King in name. I can't really think of anything else to really something that's less obvious that codes that that, that could have a code name King. I, I'm not I don't think I don't think any character has that person. I think K rule is the one of the only characters that has that. What? He needs some milk! Now, that leads me to my next character, which is the character codename Ponytail. Now, of course, since this is King K. Rule, Ponytail, it could also be Dixie Kong, because Dixie Kong is known to have a ponytail that spins, has helicopter attack, you can pick stuff up with it, and all that jazz in the Donkey Kong games. And, if you guys remember, in Brawl, a long time ago, Dixie Kong was supposed to be in Brawl as a part of Diddy Kong, and it was supposed to work similar to how they do in Donkey Kong Country 2 or Diddy's Quest. They're supposed to work similar in that in that sense, but I believe Sakurai didn't have much time to implement that, so he just put Diddy Kong in the game and called it a day. Now, with that being said, because Sakurai was planning to have that idea before, I think personally. Uh, and I will get into this, like I said, I'm going to get into more detail in a another video. I wasn't planning this leak to be to be announced today, but this is a really cool leak, so I really like it. Ponytail being Dixie Kong, I feel like Dixie Kong could be an uh, Echo Fighter for Dix Diddy Kong. <laughs> now, before you crucify me. Like what? All right. Uh, let's be on. Let's, let's be honest here. I understand, right? She can use her hair for all of like three attacks out of the twenty something that she has in the, in the game. So I, now I know Sakurai is a miracle worker. He can make every single. He can make all these characters unique, as unique as you want. Just give them different movements, give them different hitboxes, all that jazz, and they are different characters. However, I think what's going to happen is Dixie Kong is going to be a Echo Fighter of Diddy because of her history in the Smash series of what she was supposed to be. And then also, when you look at Diddy, Diddy Kong and his trailer, you guys mention, uh, a lot of people mention, that, oh, Dixie Kong doesn't have a tail and Diddy Kong has tail attacks. So, there's no freaking way she can be added to the roster. Well, for one, my good friend, um, Diddy Kong only has a couple tail attacks. If I'm, if you're being, if we're being real here, and one of the most prominent moves he has in his arsenal that was a tail attack was the jab attack. Uh, that was a multi-hit jab combo with a strong finisher. But my friends, if you guys watched the Diddy Kong trailer, the one of those 20-second long trailer things that was revealed in the in the uh, beginning of the game, or when the character on the website, you click the character and then you see a video pop up, you guys see that they did in fact change his jab to a three-hit jab combo. So I'm going to speculate right now that they are going to put Dixie Kong in the game. However, they are going to make D Dixie Kong a Echo Fighter of Diddy Kong. That's going to be my Thing about it i don't think they're gonna really change anything about her if i'm being real with you i don't i don't think they're gonna do any anything of that nature so yeah i do think codename ponytail is dixie kong but i can see dixie kong definitely being a um echo fighter diddy kong which i don't mind i don't mind at all uh, i would welcome it actually having one unique donkey kong rep and then another echo fighter donkey kong rep that's pretty cool that is really, really cool. I like that a lot. I think the Donkey Kong series deserves four reps, if I'm being real with you. Because look where it's come from between Brawl and Smash 4. When Smash 4 was coming out, I was a strong, firm believer that I do think Donkey Kong deserves another rep. Because Donkey Kong is a series that's been... Technically, it's been around for a very, very, very long time. So... I think these two characters being revealed in July, that would be wild to me, and I'm not going to lie to y'all, if, if King K. Rool gets announced for Smash in a mini direct, I'm going to flip out. I'm, I'm probably going to flip out. I don't do that a lot. I don't do that a lot. You know, I don't really pull Etikas. <laughs> oh my fucking god! Job. But in this case, dog, if King K. Rool gets announced, I'm going to go on the floor to have a panic attack 
because of how crazy that would be. Because K. Rule is my boy. So I don't know, guys. I don't know. We'll see. So that covers it for the July part of this week. Next up is August. One more thing before we continue. Ponytail, I was thinking about it and I was doing research. Ponytail could, if you guys don't know, could also be Lip from Panel Day Pond. I think I'll just throw that in there. Just chuck it. Just chuck it at the... At the, at the dartboard, I'm probably way off, but it's fine. Uh, I can see the character of Penalty Pond being playable for Smash, her items in Smash. I don't think there was anything confirming her in the game, I'm not really sure, but I know people kind of want her in. I know that's I know that's a thing. So, And she does, in fact, have a ponytail. So, if that happens, you're already here for it, I'm just saying. The character Old Man will be revealed at Year's Evo. I am perplexed! The hell does that even mean? Year's Evo? It's probably this year's Evo, but they made the typo. Anyways. Character old man, what the hell does that mean, dog? Like, what? This doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. While King and Ponytail are more obvious, old man, codename old man, that's just, it's weird, dog. It's, it's, uh, it's so broad because there's so many old men in the freak in the gaming unit so a lot of people have stated hey maybe it's cranky kong but my thing about it being cranky kong is i just don't think sakura would do that i don't think first of all that would mean donkey kong would have five reps and even for me even though it's one of my favorite series i do not think donkey kong needs five reps in the same series i don't i don't think that that should be the case and when you look at it, yeah, I understand Cranky Kong's been popular in the past. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie to y'all, he's really, he's only recently been popular. And in my opinion, I feel like he's more worth being an assist trophy rather than a playable character. I am it. Because he is kind of important to Donkey Kong's universe. He was the original Donkey Kong, by the way. But at the same time, I wouldn't say he's so relevant to the series that he would be the character. As I said, uh, King K. Rool being one of the few villains in Donkey Kong in the Donkey Kong series, I think that warrants a spot on its own and having a unique use on top of that. D Dixie Kong is such a popular character that people want, but Cranky Kong, I just can't justify why he would be in Smash. I feel like that's something like an add on type thing. I don't think it's Cranky Kong personally, but maybe it's me. Really now, you guys know Evo is a fighting tournament. As a fighting game tournament. So something being revealed at EVO, a fighting character from a fighting game being revealed for Smash would make a lot of sense. And I agree with this line of thinking that other people that other people have when it comes to this character. I think that this is gonna be Heihachi. Heihachi from the Tekken series. And let me tell you guys why. A because it seems that a lot of third-party characters i mean sega and capcom both have two reps to their name so seeing as uh, seeing as namco bandai you know has pac-man but not really any other character i can totally see a heihachi getting revealed to correlate with that basically also if you guys don't know sakurai was in fact considering heihachi to be in the roster when deciding back when sakurai was considering think he characters like Ryu and stuff he was in fact considering Heihachi for a Smash character so with that being said I think Heihachi has a really decent shot of being in the game you gotta keep in mind when Sakurai says hey I was considering this character back then nine times out of ten they're gonna be in the next game uh when you look at Brawl and you see characters like freaking Villager, Miis, and you know Pac-Man were supposed to be revealed as well Sakurai was like oh yeah I would have I would have put this character in the game but I, I don't feel like they fit in with the roster and then what happens boom all three of them are revealed for the next smash game so i don't know when sakura mentions characters like that of course it's not a guarantee i'm not saying that at all but i feel like sakura is kind of giving us a mental hit that hey this character may be in my mind for the next time he may not be in this game but he might be in the next one so who knows i think heihachi is going to be one of those characters plus the fact that it's evo it's a fighting game tournament, you know, what other way to have that than a fighting game tournament? And having Ryu and Heihachi in the same game is just, it's, it's, it's a no brain Like, come on. If you can do, if Sakurai can do it, he, he'll do it. I'm sure he'll do it. Definitely. 
That's freaking dope, though. I, I like uh, the fact that Hey Hachi can meet a friend. I think that'd be dope, so. I'm totally down for having Hey Hachi being codename Old Man for August. And I don't think any other character, I can't think of any other Old Man character that could work out, that could be a character in the game. I don't know, I don't know. But, you know, if, if you guys can think of other options for these characters, please comment down in the comment section below what y'all think of all these characters that we're, I'm talking about, and if you think you think there's another character that could fit the bill more than the one that I'm talking about. And I'll totally be out there on the listen, I'm totally down to discuss with that, so yeah. So, moving on to September. The character Archer will be revealed in a direct of some kind. Now, oh boy, let's let's get into the obvious here. This Decidui. Let's get into the obvious that this could possibly be Decidui. Decidui is a Pokemon character, as you guys know, from the game Sun and Moon. We don't have our Pokemon representative for this Smash game yet, and so far there has been a Pokemon representative every Smash game, so there could be another Pokemon being announced for this game. I'm just gonna say this, Decidui was in Pokemon Tournament, so I know that doesn't guarantee a spot, obviously. But that shows that, you know, you can't convert this character into a fighting game character. And I think people are going to be like, oh, well, Incineroar is more popular in the West. Well, you can't really say that anymore because Sakura put Ridley in the game. So it shows that he's listening to both the West and the Japanese audience for this type of thing. And I think the Western audience likes Decidueye a little more than Incineroar and Pring and all that. I know Japan, I think Japan, they like Incineroar, Game Freak, and I know, I believe it was either, I think it was Jinichi Masuda. He said that Incineroar was one of his favorite Pokemon, I think from either 7th gen or just in general. And Incineroar was really popular in the anime, so that's another thing. So, I'm not sure. It could go either way, but I think to please the Western audience, I think Decidueye would make a lot of sense to put in the game. And plus, Decidueye can have some unique abilities being also a ghost type, and Sakurai could do some some cool stuff with that, so, I don't know, I think Decidueye could work out as his own fighter, and, I don't know, I think it could work. Other than that, I really can't think of another archer that's relevant to the game. I don't think there's a relevant Fire Emblem archer, if I'm being honest with you, I don't think so. But I may have to do more, I should probably should have done more research on the topic, but I think Decidueye is a safe bet for archer in September, so we're just gonna leave it at that. If you guys, like I said, if you guys can come up with any more ideas for Archer, comment down below what y'all think. But anyways, uh, moving on. 12 o'clock midnight. Okay guys, and, uh, so the next character that we're gonna be talking about is October's Batch of Characters, which is apparently going to be Warrior and Secretary, Secretary is gonna be revealed. So, first of all, I do think the Warrior character for this of Smash Focus Direct being revealed. Uh, I hear a lot of people saying it's going to be Simon Belmont. And with that, I think I'm going to have to actually agree to that. I think Simon Belmont is going to be the character. Because if you guys remember, uh, a while ago I covered a leak that basically said Rid that not only that there was not going to be any cuts for the Smash roster, but also that Ridley was going to be revealed, Ice Storm's going to turn, and Ridley is going to be revealed at E3. Now, as you guys know, as you guys clearly can see, that leak was right, right? So, with that being said, now I have to put that leak on blast. The last character that the leak st stated will be in the game is Simon Belmont. Now, as I said with Hachi, it's not weird to have two reps for a series. Now, with that being said, Konami has Snake. Snake! Oh my! Uh, Bomberman is already deconfirmed as an assist trophy, and the only other character I can really think of that has the history between Nintendo that is a Konami owned rep that would that can go along Snake is in fact Simon Belmont. And I think Simon Belmont would work with the whole thing. I think his moveset would be cool, and I've already talked about him t as much to my knowledge as I can. I said that he could have whip attacks, he could be a slow fighter. While he is slow, he has the range of a god because of the whip attacks. I can totally see that. I can totally see him being a character in the game. I can totally see him working. And I would actually really like to see him in the game. The more I think about it, the cooler it sounds as Simon Belmont being confirmed for Smash. It sounds dope. And I feel like characters like Bomberman, while Bomberman would have been cool, I feel like a lot of his attacks would have just been throwing bombs and throwing more bombs and throwing more, even more bombs and 
throwing more about it, it doesn't allow for creativity on Sakari's part. You can be creative with that moveset, but it's not you don't have as many creative liberty as you can with characters like Simon Belmont. So I would definitely say Warrior. The character being codenamed Warrior is going to be Simon Belmont. As there's the lead that Stady is going to be in, and now this is quote unquote stating. I'm only guessing here. However, there are a lot of warrior characters out there. There's a lot of Fire Emblem characters that are also warriors. I don't think that, similar to the Archer class, I don't think there are any important, really big, important characters that fall under the warrior archetype, if I'm being honest, with the, under the Fire Emblem series. So I think for now we're just going to leave that, we're going to leave that to, to there, I guess. The other character that gets revealed is the character codenamed under the classification of Secretary. Now, that, I was thinking about it, and honestly, I do have to agree with the majority here. The only character that makes sense for is Isabel. Now, if you guys, Isabel from Animal Crossing. Now, if you guys don't know, I used to not be the biggest fan of this character being in because for me, I feel as if Isabel would have just been a, a similar to Villager. As you guys don't know, I when I when I think of characters for the roster, I think of what can that character bring to the series that characters already in that series hasn't brought in yet. So, for example, on Fire Emblem side, you have Marth, Ike. Roy, all of these lords, but they all use swords. Fire Emblem's not all about sword fighting lords. Robin, you have Robin there to represent the strategy, and you have Corrin, of course, there to represent like dragons and the mythical side of the Fire Emblem roster. So that being said, you know, when I'm thinking of Isabel, I'm like, okay, Isabel could be a character confirmed for Animal Crossing. Sure, but what would she do that's different from the villager? Would she also use the axe, or would she also use the slingshot? Because if so, there's no real point in having her in. But now with Echo Fighters being introduced, I can see her being either an Echo Fighter or a semi-clone of the villager. Maybe she has her own normal attacks, but I feel like when it comes to special attacks, I feel like she's going to have some of the same stuff. Because Villager represents a lot of things that's in the Animal Crossing series. Unless I'm missing something, unless New Leaf brought something, or they used something from the Animal Crossing app or something. Unless they have something else that they can differentiate uh, Isabel with. I, I just can't see her be, being her own standalone character. But I, I have been wrong many, many times, and I would be fine with her being in the game, if Sakurai can make her work, and he probably will, thinking about it, so I'm not going to worry about it, plus it makes sense that Isabel would be confirmed as a character because not only, she was the only assist trophy to not only be an assist trophy, but she also got a knee fighter later on, and I'm sure she did in fact get voted in the ballot, and she is highly, highly requested among lots of people. A, a, Probably in Japan as well, because Japan likes these type of characters. I can totally see her being a fighter. I can, I honestly, I can at this point. So it doesn't even bother me anymore. I think Isabel could, has a fantastic chance of being in the in the roster, and I think yeah, I think it works. I don't know how they're gonna make her move set. If I'm gonna be honest with you, but uh, we'll, we'll just see what happens. We'll see what happens, and you know, if I like it, I'll like it. Now, before we get into the big batch of three, we have one more kind of character to talk about, and that is November's character. November, the character co codenamed Mech, will be revealed in a surprise character announcement. Now, what the heck is Mech? <laughs> so, I have a couple ideas for this. I have a couple ideas of who the hell represents Mech. Now, the general consensus points to Elma from Xenoblade Chronicles. X. I can see that happening because of two reasons. One is because Sakurai had the plans for Smash Ultimate all the way back in 2015. By that time, I don't think Xenoblade Chronicles 2 was really at that stage yet, and I feel like if Sakurai was going to add another Xenoblade Chronicles character, it would probably be Elma, or the main character from Xenoblade Chronicles X. It might be the main character as well. And two, because in Xenoblade Chronicles X, as you guys know, the main trope for characters to use 
is the max. That's the, that was the main drive of the series was the max. So I can totally see Elma being a fighter. Elma or I think his name no, it wasn't Rat. I think his name was Will actually. No! The default name for the character avatar from Zeno with Hermes too. This reminds me all the way back when people thought, oh hey, Krom's gonna get it. And people were wrong and it was actually Robin who got it. I feel like this might be a similar thing. People think Elma's gonna get in all this stuff to be hype and blah 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 blah. But Sakura's gonna throw a curveball and add in the main character of Xenoblade Chronicles X instead. I mean you gotta admit guys, this is this just because he is an avatar, just because he's an avatar, that doesn't mean he can't be in the game. Like I said, Robin was confirmed the roster. He could just do the same thing, but for whoever this character Name. So he could be confirmed as a fighter instead of Elma or Elma herself. Another idea I had was uh, the custom Robo series being represented. I can see that. Another one, the Transformers. Shit, outside chilling with the Transformers right now. You know how we do. Oh shit, they just transform. Oh, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Don't don't swat me. I know. I'm joking. Calm down, I'm joking. But the custom Robo series I am serious about. Now, another idea I just had was an advanced war character. Because you wanna talk about mechs, that series, I, I guess I wouldn't call it mech, but it was technology focused. There was a character, you know, Sammy. I know a lot of people wanted Sammy in the game, when Snake was cut, they wanted a similar move set to the bat. They could actually add Sammy and or uh, other characters. Andy, I believe his name is. They could add those characters from Custom Robo into the game. Well, I think that could work out. I think that could work out. And they are mech focused. They, they normally they just fight with gear and stuff of that nature. So I can totally see that being the case. It doesn't have to be Elma from Xenoblade Chronicles X. So I'm am just I'm just throwing stuff out there. Custom Robo character uh, that was in Assist Trophy and Brawl. I can't remember his name. I apologize. But custom Robo character, you know, the, the Advanced Force character. There are plenty of other characters that falls under this category of mech that could be in the game besides Elma. However, I do think that's probably one of the best guesses out there. Elma or the uh, main character of Xenoblade Chronicles X, the Avatar. That's what I. Think. So I'm going to label those two for now, but I'm keeping those other options in the back of my head, just in case. If, if anyone asks, you heard it here first. And finally, guys, finally, 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 the final characters that are going to be revealed post-release is what I'm trying to say here. We have the other characters. The characters Rhythm, Folklore, Doll, and Prime Ribs won't get revealed trailers until post-release. Now. Who the hell are these characters? These are probably some of the hardest ones to decipher. Well, two of them are probably the hardest ones to decipher. So to start off, let's start off, let's get the obvious one out the way. Rhythm. Who is Rhythm? Well, it's obviously going to be Rhythm Heaven. If you guys don't know, a long time ago, there was a leak that information dumped when tampering with the game and stuff behind it that claimed, well, that not claimed, but it was very heavily hinted at that there was in fact supposed to be a Rhythm Heaven character confirmed for Smash Bros. Well, there was a Rhythm Heaven character being worked on for Smash Bros. And, if you guys remember, the Gamatsu leak a long, long time ago, probably one of the closest leaks. Personally, I still find that leak true because the only characters that didn't get confirmed out of all the characters that this guy predicted was Krom and Korosman. Krom was confirmed Sakura, it was confirmed on Sakura's brain, and we saw we saw stuff with Krom being made, so it's just halfway through making Krom, Sakura was like, you know what, let's use Robin instead. And the chorus kids, the chorus men, uh, were also another character heavily speculated to be in the game. Now, the reason why I find that they're going to be in this game is because, like I said, a info leak claimed that the chorus men or that a rhythm, a rhythm based character data was confirmed in the game. I don't, I don't know the specifics of it, which is unfortunate, I probably should have looked it up, but it was something along those lines. And it is heavily implied that that refers to the Rhythm Heaven series because that's the only series that is about rhythm that makes sense under Nintendo's brand of franchise. It's the only one that makes sense. Unless you want to say the Elite Beat Agents, you can say those as well. I'm gonna throw those guys out there because they are rhythm-based series from Nintendo. That makes sense. All right, but I do I do think we are gonna see uh, rhythm. We're gonna see the return of the chorus men, 
And I said it before, if we do, I think that those characters would have a rhythm based moveset. You have to play the character with the rhythm of control or some, some, maybe something of how the character works. I don't know. I, I'm not 100% sure of it. I think it'll be cool. So that is Codename Rhythm. I think those are going to be the chorus kids or the Elite Beat Agents. We're, we're just gonna, I'm not gonna leave any character on turn here. So the next code name is code name Folklore. Now this is probably the hardest one to decipher. I know lots of people say Amaterasu from the Okami series. Now, my opinions on this, Capcom getting three reps is kind of wild. If I'm being honest here, I don't know if Konami's gonna actually be getting three reps in one. I'm not 100% I'm not sure. So, with that being said, I dug in a little more research because this isn't the most out there thing. However, it makes sense for Okami because Okami is coming to the Switch, and Okami is a game that is heavily, heavily based on folklore. However, there are other characters based on folklore as well that I'm just gonna kinda run through real quick and I'm going to go through, so I will be right back. Eventually. So I looked at an article basically stating some characters that, that could be characters in the game, and or I was looking up characters with folklore that is obvious behind them. Now the first thing that came up that piqued my interest was Yokai Watch. Alright, now I understand, you know, it's it's Yokai Watch and blah 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 blah. But Yokai Watch is a popular series. Yokai Watch is a very popular series, rivaling that of even Pokemon in Japan. So obviously, it's a very popular series among the Japanese audience. That being said, I can see the Japanese audience rooting for them to be in Smash, sending in sending Sakurai letters and stuff, saying, "Hey, can I have these? Can I have your Banyan for Smash Bros. or something of that nature?" So, with that being said, I can actually kind of see the Yokai Watch, the Yokai. Specifically, Jabanyan being in Smash Brothers as Level 5's guest character. And Level 5, if you guys don't know, the same guys who produce series like, you know, the most notable is Professor Layton, the Professor Layton franchise. And they are on good terms with Nintendo when it comes to that kind of stuff. Yoka Watch is on 3DS and stuff. It started out as a game. It, like I said, it gained huge occult following and honestly is a popular series in Japan. So, with that being said, I think Sakura is going to throw in the Japanese players a bone. They could throw Japanese players a bone here, but the Yokai Watch and Smash? It doesn't have to be a Matarasu. So I'm just throwing out some other, you know, fighters here. Another fighter that I can see being in the game. I see a Dark Souls reference in there. So maybe they can put the character from Dark Souls in the game. Not 100 percent sure. I don't think that is I don't think I don't I don't know if that's really gonna happen. I'm just throwing ideas out there. Of course there's a Matarasu from Okami. Then uh, another thing that piqued my interest when I was looking at characters that had folklore behind them was there's this character named Amano Jaku from Shin Shimigami Tensei. If you guys remember, Shimigami Tensei, the franchise behind it, did a series with um, Fire Emblem. Shimigami Tensei Cross Fire Emblem. And wasn't in the Switch presentation when they were first showing off the Switch in the very first Switch presentation that was more than a year ago, which was wild. They showed off a Shimigami, oh no, that's Persona. Was it Persona? It was either Persona or Shimigami Tensei. They showed like an exclusive trailer of Shimigami Tensei. We haven't heard anything about it, but I think it was something like that where it was revealed. Just in case it's not, I'm gonna stop this now. But if it was actually Shimigami Tensei revealed, I can totally see them throwing a character from there in Smash Brothers. I mean, you have moves, you have moves there, and I believe Shimigami Tensei published by the company Atlas. If you guys don't know, Atlas and Nintendo have had a relationship. If you guys remember, I think a long time ago, Nintendo was trying to buy Atlas so that way they could own the Persona franchise and the Shimigami Tensei franchise franchise some of their more popular franchises they have under the belt so honestly i can see a shimigami tensei character being in there i think that'd be cool i don't know exactly what they would make because i know nothing about shimigami tensei so who knows maybe something from that crossfire emblem they'll have a popular character from there i'm sure they had a popular character from there uh, just as fire emblem did i'm sure they might have something there i think that'd be cool i think that'd be dope to see a shimigami tensei character 
fighting in Smash against characters like Mark and Ike and uh, all the characters that were in Shin Megami Tensei Cross Fire Emblem. So I'm down for that. And with that being said, that's really all I can gain from this website that I, or this article that I found of folklore characters and franchises that are based on folklore. Obviously, Amaterasu is the one that everyone thinks of because it is ba heavily based on Japanese folklore from the story to the art style, etc, etc. But, you can't count the other boys out. I can totally see Jibanyan being a character. I can totally see a Shin Megami Tensei character being in. It's such a broad topic. And what kind of folklore is it anyway? It does it have to be Japanese folklore or is it some other kind of folklore from another country? I don't know. And that means we have to look at franchises with that, with that brand in mind. I don't know. I don't know. The point is, folklore could be literally anything. So tell me what you guys think folklore could be in the comment section below. For my three choices, maybe which one makes the most sense, yada yada yada. Now the next one is Doll. Code name Doll. With that being said, you guys, <laughs> yeah, I already know what y'all are. Well, yeah, I already know y'all Gino fans are pissing yourselves right now. Yes, I do think Gino is going to be in the roster. Now, if you guys remember a long time back, when Gino was first announced as a Me Fighter costume, he was the only Me Fighter costume that actually got a quote unquote trailer. It was a very loose trailer, but it was a trailer itself in that in that formation. He was the only character that's gotten that kind of thing. And I think Sakurai knows from the ballot, I'm sure lots of people voted for Gino. And people have clearly shown their love. Uh, a big wig at the Smash competitive scene, D1, he wants Gino in a lot. So that makes a lot of sense that Gino could be confirmed for the game. I, th I think that is like perfect. Gino being confirmed as the last Square Enix character. Now you see a pattern here with all this stuff is that now we have two Capcom reps, we have two Sega reps, we have two Namco reps if Heihachi is true. We have two Konami reps with Simon Belma. And who's a one series left that we haven't had any characters for and that still only has one rep, the one third party company is Konami. Whoa. <laughs> is Square Enix. And guess who's the only character that is in there? There's Cloud. You know, I don't think they're going to put in Sora. Maybe I'll make a video on why because it is really complicated. But the one character that that's the one company and the one character that everyone and their mother want that is very much possible to be in the next game, and I can totally see it happening, is Gino. Gino would make so much sense. Gino was part of the Mario, was ba is basically a Mario character, it's just under Square Enix's name because they designed the character. So it would still technically be a Square Enix character, but it's, it's technically a Mario, it's weird. It's weird though, it's weird. So Gino being confirmed, that is a character that everyone and their mother wants. I think Gino is a dope ass looking character. For anything, he could be, he could be the folklore character, but no, I think he falls under the doll category too well. Like honestly guys, I think if this leak is true, the, the doll code name is definitely Gina. Definitely Gina. 100% Gina. So that's what I think is going to happen with Gino. I think that's going to be Gino. He's going to be the final Square Enix character, giving us two reps across every single company that's currently being represented this time. Now obviously, for folklore, I did say, you know, a character from Atlas, a character from level 5. However, those companies are, I guess they're less well known than the companies already represented, so maybe they get a little bit of, hey, you get, you can get one character for now, blah, 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 that type of stuff. I don't know, man. I'm just here. <laughs> and the final character, the final codename is Codename Prime Ribs. I'm on my baby back, baby back, baby back. I'm on my baby back, baby back. Chili's baby back ribs. Chili's baby back ribs. Now, normally, this would be the hardest one to decipher. Who the hell in Nintendo is related to Prime Ribs? What the frick? I don't know. I do not know. However, I do think I have an idea of who could fall into this category. And I think it's a perfect idea. I know the article that I'm reading now, it says Dark Samus because they think maybe it's just throwing it off course and Prime means something. I I think that they're thinking way too much into it. And I think that instead, you have to take this leak 
literally. You have to take this literally. Prime rib. That does not mean that, oh, you take prime. Like, this isn't some x file stuff. <laughs> it's like, oh, if you take the prime in rib and flip it upside down, it looks like Dark Samus. Therefore, meaning the Dark Samus could be confirmed. Just ignore the ribs part of it. No, you can't do that. You can't just do that, dog. You can't just do that. But that being said, people will be like, well, well genius, you figured out, you... You whore! If you're gonna freaking blame me, okay, I'll, I'll solve it for you. So Prime Rib, right? Not a lot of characters that fall under that category, except for one, and that is Ninten from Mother 1. Now, hear me out. I didn't realize this until Aaron Nitmar, you know him? I was watching his video, and that actually made a lot of sense, seeing his, his evidence towards Ninten being in the game. So if you guys know, in every Earthbound Mother game, they always tell you, hey, what's your favorite food? And every character will have a, already canonically, will already have their favorite food in there. If you decide, hey, I'm just gonna stick to the regular thing. So for instance, in Earthbound, Ness's favorite food, canonically, is steak but you can change it to anything you want you can change it to pasta you can change it to to uh, dogs you can change it to ass what i don't say anything but uh steak is canonically ness's favorite food that is 100 percent his favorite food so if the code name was steak i would be like oh yeah it's nice <laughs> totally even though it's already in the game right yeah <laughs> oh. but if you guys check nintendo's favorite food Canonically, by default, his favorite food, lo and behold, is in fact prime rib. Yep, Nintendo's favorite food is prime rib. So, it, canonically, that's what his favorite food is. That's the default food that he likes. That's his favorite food. Meaning that Conan Prime Rib falls under Ninten very well. And the fact that there being three mother reps and normally, I'd be like, there's just no way Sakurai would do that. But, you know, I also said there's no way Sakurai's gonna put Really in the game. And Ness and Lucas are already in the game, are already in Smash. You may as well have the last mother character in the game. And then the last mother character being the first mother. You could have him being in the game. And when you think about it, Ninten, this is probably the perfect time for Ninten because you guys remember a long time ago, his game Mother 1 was for the first time available legally to the Western audience by it being available via eShop on the Wii U Virtual Console. And we know Sakurai finished the roster all the way back in 2015. Now, personally, I think that this means that Nintendo, since all this was happening, and lo and behold, guess when Mother was introduced, uh, guess when Mother was introduced to, guess when Mother 1 was introduced to the Wii U Virtual Console, guys, guess when? It was June 14th, 2000. And 15. Sakurai said he finished the roster, like he finished everything, he started designing the game late 2015. So that would give it about a couple months for him to choose like the entire roster. And I can bet money that he had his mind on Nintendo from that point. You gotta remember this because Sakurai has confirmed him saying that he doesn't he plans his characters out years before the game is is even announced. In Smash 4. He was planning stuff and had the entire roster before he even picked up starting development for the actual game. So with that being said, I think that Sakurai, you know, obviously at this point, uh, it's like, eh, okay, who really cares? Eh, who really cares about Nintendo being the game? Well, at the time, Sakurai, I'm sure Sakurai had him in mind because the Mother series is so popular now. So I feel as if because Mother 1 was introduced to the Virtual Console, Sakurai was like, hey, since this is introduced to the Virtual Console, now Western audience have, has a thing about it. I'll just add them in the game. Add Nintendo in the game. Snag Nintendo and put him in the game. Because why not, right? Why not? While he has a similar look to Ness, I mean, I can still see him being a character. Plus, Sakurai can redesign him in a way that he doesn't look as similar to Ness. I still think Nintendo. I I, I firmly believe 100% that Nintendo is, in fact, codenamed Prime Bit. So, with all that being said, we have 
come through, slid in here, and covered literally every single one of these dudes. Every single one of these characters uh, I've covered, I've covered to the best of my knowledge. I think that these are the characters going to be real. So, in conclusion, I think Codename King is going to be King K. Rool. Codename Ponytail is Dixie Kong. Codename Old Man is Heihachi. Codename Archer is Decidueye. Codename Warrior is Sang Bella. Codename Secretary is Isabel. Codename Mech is Elma or Elma or Will or Custom Robo, etc. etc. I think Codename Rhythm is going to be the Rhythm Heaven, Chorus Kids, Karate Joe, all that. I think Codename Folklore could either be a Matarasu or Shimigami Tensei character or Yo or Javanya from Yo Kai Watch, etc. I think Codename Doll is Gino and I think Codename Prime Ribs goes to Nin Ten. Boom! Drop the mic. Oh yeah! Blaze, you're so cool! He saw the roster! No, please. Let me stop. Let me stop. And with that being said, guys, that is going to be it for today's episode of Smash Talk. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is probably going to be a long video, and that's not good for me. <laughs> oh, it's not good for me at all. But it's okay. Um, you know, I enjoy making these videos. There's a reason why it was... It's, it, this video recording is almost an hour long. There's a reason why, because I love talking about this kind of stuff. I love talking about leaks and things of that nature. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Next episode is going to be me catching up. Next episode is going to be the website episode because I have that episode started ready, uh, not ready to go, but I have it basically halfway done. So I'm going to finish up that and then I'm going to finish up the first impressions video, have that out and so on and so forth. I'm not going to keep you guys too long, so thank you guys so much for watching. I promise all these videos out and we're, we'll get back into the Smash Talk grind. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like this episode and want to see what else is on the grill, you guys share the whole place in the description below. And of course, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you guys want more Smash Talk on your plate. But with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here. Thank you all for watching. And with all that being said, you can put your spatulas down now, but keep this as my bacon areas. Peace. And before I go... I forgot to mention this, but tell me anything about this leak you guys think is true, whether if you think it's true, or if you just want to talk about who these characters could be, put them down below. You know, I will 100% respond. This is a discussion video. This is meant to have discussion in the comment section and whatnot. So I just wanted to bring that up real quick. But yeah, I will catch you guys next time. That being said, deuces it. Have a nice day, dudes.